Hello and welcome back Pokemon Trainers. This time we are featuring seniors that is their last game for today. The last game of the tournament. It is the finals and we have a very exciting game to show you guys. It is Ethan French from UK against Marco Hermanta Caludara Silva from, it from Italy. Yeah, Marco Hermanta Caludara Silva and <laughs> Ethan French, two players that are probably very famous in the seniors division. I haven't... I, uh, honestly, I haven't seen too much of either of them so far, so I hope that they can use the stage that we provide them to make a case for themselves and show that they um, have what it takes. Um, I mean, they battled, both of them battled through a pretty strong European field of seniors yep. here, and um, looking at their teams, both of them are also using um, teams that you could definitely also expect to see in a Masters Division, division Final. So I'm looking forward to seeing some good games here of two players that um, I don't know too much about. Uh, maybe, can you fill us in here a little bit? Uh, at least I know Ethan French. Uh, he's doing quite well. Um, recently, I think he's pretty good in CP-wise as well. Uh, I think both these players are fighting for their top uh, top 16 spot. Um, and, um, well, uh, let's talk about the teams for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at the teams here, um, we do have two Mega Metagross teams, um, both of them coming with Incineroar and Landorus Therian form, as well as Zapdos, and um, it looks like both of them also have a Tapu Fini, so the only difference in teams here is the fact that there is an Amoongus on um, Marco's side, and on um, Ethan's side we do have a Tyranitar. Yep, so very uh, similar teams on both sides here. Um, and I want to stress out that even though this is seniors, uh, this is very like a serious game here. Uh, we have price money on the line, so first place takes home a Visa pre uh, prepaid credit card over $500, mm -hmm. while second place is still getting home with $250, so that is great pricing for seniors coming to Stuttgart here to play Pokemon. And I want to say, um, both being foreign players, and none of them being German, um, nice to see how both of them are doing pretty well here. Um, and we are about to get into game one, actually. Um, let's see what both trainers decide to lead with. So yeah, it's always an interesting decision um, with those Mega Metagross teams. Um, yeah, like we've seen it before, uh, like the moveset on Mega Metagross can always be an important factor. Usually they do carry Stomping Tantrum, Ice Punch, Iron Head and Protect, but if one of them has like a little bit of different moveset, then that can um, really be like one point uh, like one approach of where you can try and uh, make something happen here. Yep. Um, for the first game, it looks like both of them are going with um, a pretty common, pretty standard lead. Um, EV Incineroar and Zapdos, of course. Uh, the synergy there being with Incineroar's Intimidate ability really supporting Zapdos' durability. Um, it can also help its partner in crime with the fake out so that Zapdos can then set up the Tailwind. Yep. And uh, most, like a lot of those Zapdos also are carrying the Electrium Z so that they can um, fire off one very strong hit after setting up Tailwind. So both that of them are, um, yeah, like going with that strategy for the yep. first game. And we have to see how Marco is both his Incineroar and his Zapdos were faster. And the very first turn starts off with fake out on both Zapdos, so not uh, happening too much here. Um, but once again, I want to stress out how um, Marco's Pokemon were both faster. Like yep. at least his Zapdos were faster than the opposing Zapdos, and his Incineroar was faster than Ethan's Incineroar. Uh, that might be uh, crucial here because in uh, what is a pretty I want to say Murrow match here. Yep. It really comes down to who has the upper hand in terms of speed control, who's faster. Because if you pick the same Pokemon, it comes down to attacks first. Yep. And um, we are seeing that both of these trainers do like to go fast. Uh, both of them going with the Tailwind here. And um, another key difference or something that could play um, a factor here is whether the Incineroar are carrying low kick. Uh, because in the mirror match, that is uh, the one attack that can really do a lot of damage. We are seeing the first difference here as Marco went ahead and went for a Flare Blitz into his opposing Zapdos, whereas Ethan decided to U-turn out there, get a little bit of chip damage, I guess, on the Zapdos, but um, now will be able to bring in one Pokemon of his choice. Yep. So the Tyranitar could be an interesting candidate if he has it, um, because with Rock Slide threatening both the Zapdos as well as the Incineroar, however, again, low kick, a potential factor on Incineroar, um, his own Landorus could also be a um, good and Pokemon, there it is. once again, for that Rock Slide, and uh, depending on what he expects his opponent Zapdos to have, whether there is a Hidden Power Ice or not, mm -hmm. um, this Landorus might be in a nice position here. I think usually you see Thunderbolt and then Tailwind Roost, um, and then one more slot open, 
You, um, yeah, we've seen we've seen Roar. Yeah, we've seen Roar. Um, and I think we haven't seen fun, uh, HP Ice, like Hidden Power Ice so far. Uh -huh. That would be something. Otherwise, that lander is in a great spot because it doesn't have to fear any attack from the Zapdos. And it's dealing pressure on that Incineroar. Um, but yeah, so that Flablitz also burning the Zapdos. So Zapdos is slowly going down. Has to lose at some point. But in combination of uh, T-Bolt plus Earthquake might be enough to pick up the KO on that Incineroar. And uh, the only thing that might switch in here for that Incineroar is the Landorus, and then we will be three out of three yes. mirrors so far. Yes, but those Pokémon are really what works um, well together with the Double Intimidate and the Zapdos, and then presumably the Mega Metagross as the last Pokémon. Um, the Tapu Fini in this matchup um, doesn't really have too big of a place because um, of how it is threatened by the Zapdos, and then also cannot really do too much damage to the Mega Metagross. And there's no like other Tapu where you need to reset the terrain, for example. So Ethan decides to go for yet another U-turn there, um, going back into his Incineroar. So recycling Intimidate yet again. It is only uh, really affecting his opponent's Incineroar, though. Um, however, also means that he will be able to use Fake Out the following turn. Yep, especially resetting Fake Out might be important here. Um, Tailwinds should still last a little bit longer than next turn, but there's the. Gigavolt Havoc coming off from that Zapdos. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that is already enough to take the uh, KO on either of these Pokemon, but it will definitely deal a lot of damage. Let's see where this is going at here. Yeah, usually we're used to seeing this move from uh, Tapu Koko, who then also has the Electric Terrain most of the time to boost its damage output. So always kind of iffy to like calculate or to estimate how much damage this does, but Zapdos wow. is a very powerful attacker. Taking out his opponent Zapdos means that Ethan will be the one going up um, in terms of Pokemon. However, now after this player with the score, yeah, might be neutral again as um, both of the, these players use, uh, lose their Zapdos. Yep, um, there's the potential of Landorus coming back in and that Incineroar will be at minus 3 attacks that uh, probably want to switch out soon. Also, want to stress out or like um, point out how Ethan is going for u turn on both Incineroar and Landorus to be able to position himself uh, in, like once again and there's the Landorus and the Metagross. Interesting to see uh, that he has Metagross on the back. Uh -huh. um, good switch in here because he doesn't have to fear any Intimidate. And having both Intimidates on the field does means that he can go for Mega Evolution without fearing any Intimidate switching in here. Um, but what we don't know yet is what item the Landers of Marco Hermanta uh, is carrying. So that might be a Choice Guard, which would then be crucial here. Uh, but if it's not a Choice Guard, then Metagross in is in a great spot. Uh huh. So, um, so just naturally after those first couple of turns, it might look like Ethan is the one in the driving seat. He was able to get a couple, of, stack a couple of intimidates on his opponent's Incineroar, yep. and also in this turn he can use Fake Out. His opponent's Incineroar has taken a little bit of damage, and both of them lost the Zapdos. However, at the same time, though, this advantage is like <laughs> so minimal, and um, essentially it's still anyone's game. Um, it will come down to like some plays um, eventually, I suppose. For example, right here we could see a knockoff coming out from Ethan instead of the. Um, fake out, though if he decided to go for something like a fake out and ice punch into this Landorus, this could have been crucial, but not the choice card that you were mentioning, instead it is a uh, protecting Landorus. Yep, so not a soul vest either, protect Ooh. really important here, but he goes with a stopping cancel nice into play. what was the Incineroar, now is the Metagross, takes about 75% damage, so that is really important because yep. uh, now Incineroar and Metagross both being full half on even side, while well, that Metagross from Marco took already so much damage. Yeah, there was nothing Marco really could have done. His Incineroar was, um, has been intimidated so many times, so even if he just stayed in there and went for, say, a Flare Blitz into his opponent, yep. uh, opposing Mega Metagross, that would not have done all too much damage. And due to the fact that Ethan went for the Fake Out on the Landorus, he also covered for the option that Landorus was going for like a potential U-turn um, to try and reset Marco's position and then um, like do something like that. But um, so in the end, um, Ethan was able to get off a free stomping tantrum, and all of that was because of like the work he did early on with the Zapdos, and then switching in the Metagross instead of the Landorus. Yep. So now Incineroar comes back in for the um, Metagross, but I think an Ice Punch will still be like deal a lot of damage. Barely misses out the KO there. Uh, and we see a Rock Tomb. Uh, Very interesting. Yeah, this no Rock Slide, no Flinch, uh, Speed Drop. But mm -hmm. he was faster than both these Pokemon anyway. Yeah, this might not be enough, honestly, for Marco. If he went for something like a 
like if he had say the ground UMZ on this lander and um, got a big KO this turn, mm -hmm. uh, then that really would have helped him. But now after the, the Rock Tomb's uh, speed drop has already been um, like leveled again because Incineroar of Ethan just switching out with a U-turn once again looks like that might be his favorite move there. Now bringing in his own lander, Therian Farm, going for another round of Intimidate, and this time it'll affect two physical attackers. Yep. Uh, Tailwind on both sides is over here, so everything neutral out again. Uh, but that Metagross um, and that Landorus in combination together is really working out for Ethan at the moment because they're dealing so much pressure on the opposing field and Landorus taking that Ice Punch but not going for a potential Tectonic Rage there uh, is now so low in HP that another Ice Punch is easy enough to pick uh -huh. up the KO there and Landorus is then free to attack and we have to see, I think from what happens before, we can assume that at least Ethan's lander is carrying the choice card. Um, yes, certainly, or it might not, it should not be uh, the ground UMZ at least, since we have already seen that on his Zapdos. So once again, both players have the same Pokemon on the board. Um, not anymore though, as we're seeing the Metagross make an appearance here for Marco. So like, those mirror matches are really um, like, Im like it's very important to keep track of everything because like, there's always the option that how like if you're only down to three Pokemon you don't have that many like switches going on or that many options to, to go for switches so Marco nicely um, protecting his lander, switching in the Metagross um, not losing anything this turn even though his opponent essentially had like a free move to to do yep uh, and I just can repeat what I said before Ethan once again in a great spot here uh, a lot of pressure from his side he has Incineroar with the fake out pressure now uh, his landers can attack as well um, so I think this first game might actually go to Ethan but um, similar to what happened in Masters, they probably want to know more information about the opposing team. But mm -hmm. even though this is a mirror game, we see how uh, some of those Pokemon have different items, different moves. So that is important uh, to keep in mind and gather as much information as possible yep. going into the next game. I think if you're Marco, you want to protect your Metagross and switch an Incineroar so that next turn, um, if you make the right call and double target something with Fake Out plus an attack, say like Fake Out an Ice Button in the Landers or Fake Out and Stomping Tantrum into the Incineroar, you can get a KO and then um, maybe uh, you have you still have like somewhat of an option to get back into the game. Yep, but he's actually going for that Mega Evolution straight away. Um, so it looks like he made the read that his opponent was going to like U-turn out um, into like or was going to use U-turn into what is now the Landorus. However, instead we're seeing the Rock Slide. Of course, won't do all too much to the Mega Metagross. Um, actually, yeah, like Metagross should be able to take yet another move. Um, another Rock Slide at least. Yeah, another Rock Slide at least. I probably still would have preferred to see the Protect there. Um, but yeah, it gives Mark an opportunity to, if he makes the right call, um, get a KO this turn. Yep, there is like the Ice Punch uh, potential to KO the Landorus and then Stomping Tether, I'm not entirely sure if that is enough at this stage. It might be enough to take... I think it, I think it could be, yeah. It like could be because it's neutral and there's no uh, incoming um, yeah, he could intimidate. Like, he could like flare with Landorus and um, stomping tandem the Incineroar, expecting like the Landorus to switch into Metagross. That would uh, maybe be a great it, turn. it might be it might have been a little bit too soon for Ethan to oh, wow. um, to lock himself into Rock Slide, and that is actually what we're seeing here. The Metagross is coming in, but now if Marco made the right call here, and if Incineroar of Ethan does not have Protect, like this might be a very big turn for Marco. The stomping tandem is coming off, and it's getting to KO that Incineroar, and if it if there's the Flabbits now, which is neutral as well. Ah, oh, he went for the knockoff instead. Okay, still uh, doing a decent chunk. Yep. And I think now a Stomping Tendrum might even be enough to pick up the KO yes, on the Metagross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the Landorus can easily go for Earthquake here, locking himself into. So yeah, what I thought is like a good game for uh, Ethan turns out to be a really great um, position here for Ma Marco. Yeah, so Ethan, um, it depends on what coverage attack he has on Landers, I guess. Such as Superpower, for example? Uh, yeah, but but then again, like even I was thinking like maybe, oh, he can Stomping Tantrum uh, his opponent's Incineroar and attack the Metagross, like knock it out with his Landers. Okay. Um, but then, like, Landers. his opponent still has Landers in the back. But um, that is so low in HP. Yeah, so he should, he should like, depending on <laughs> which, which move he has, if he has a move on Landers that can KO Metagross, um, and he can go for that. Um, yep. On the other side, Marco could protect and switch out. Um, and general, what, what was what I was going to say, but he's switching out his Metagross for Landorus. Yeah, like if it was like Superpower, for example, I think. Um, and Stomping Tantrum should be enough to knock out the Incineroar there, even after the minus one. But no, it's just a Rock Slide. Okay. Uh, he really likes to play it dangerous. But now, if this Incineroar has the Berry, um, we should be like. We should see it survive um, the Stomping Tantrum though. 
No berry activating. Uh, Sloppy Tender will take the KO on its inner, and it looks like eventually Ethan will uh, will be the winner here of this first game. Yep. So very two very crucial uh, knockouts there, and then Rock Slide now single target. Um, might be enough to pick up the go, otherwise I think uh, double up with that Metagross is definitely enough. Um, not seeing a berry on that Incineroar might indicate that it's carrying the item Assault West. Uh -huh. Actually there might still be like a theoretical chance here for Marco to win, like if Rock Slide misses or uh, he can take two Rock Slides and then Stomping Tantrum gets the KO on the Metagross yep. and he wins the Speed Tie. But That's a Rock Slide right. connecting, should not get the KO, no. And let's see who's winning the Speed Tie. And it is the okay, so if Rockside misses here, uh, Marco actually still wins this first game if he has Ice Punch. Okay, wow. So it finally comes down to that 90% hitting Rockslide. <laughs> um, both plays also down on time, but that won't matter because we will yeah. only see one more turn here. And there it is. Landris only has to connect with Rockslide so that Ethan would win this first game here in the Seniors Finals at the Stuttgart Regional Championships while Marco's Metagross only needs to dodge it and then get the KO with Ice Punch. Rockside comes out, connects, and they're shaking hands here after this first game. And Ethan French uh, will take the first game, but Marco came pretty close yep. to, to coming <coughs> back into this game and um, yeah, almost won it. Even after that second to last turn, losing two Pokemon, uh, with taking that rock side, winning the speed tie, KOing that opposing Metagross, uh, he brought it down to only that one crucial um, rock side that had to connect. So yes. very nice mirror game here. Uh, really nice to see how even in seniors they are playing on a very high level. What do you mean even in seniors? There's like that's like so <laughs> much on the line here. They're very competitive, and uh, there's a lot of seniors uh, as well who are practicing a lot for these tournaments. Uh, both of these players probably have had like a lot of experience taking on teams like these, and um, yeah, we're seeing the the quality of play there already. So for the second game, um, do you think that there needs to be any adjustment made because both of them really like brought the same, like, like they brought the same for Pokemon. So it's I mean not like. So it's not like Marco can be like, oh, Ethan, what did you do in the first game? Huh, that looks kind of cool. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to do that too. Um, I mean, he can attempt to do that, but he'll just end up with what he did in the first game. I mean, well. I expect both players to have a lot of practice with this kind of teams and playing Mirrors. Um, so looking at that first game, seeing how they actually brought the exact same for Pokemon, I think we, we might see the same mm -hmm. um, Mirror match again. And then it comes down to who maneuvers around who... Uh, brings himself in a better position because what we saw in the beginning was take out both the Zapdos, then setting up Tailwind, so yep. very similar plays there. And then it started changing up from that U turn on Ethan's side, I think, which which helped him to regain position. Yeah, and he got off a lot of Intimidates on that Incineroar. Yep. So that helped him, but we actually see the first change in the game. Actually, both of them are switching up the leads um, a little bit here, both of them swapping out one Pokemon. Uh, Marco's still going with the Incineroar, but instead of the Zapdos, he now has an Amoongus. And Ethan, on the other hand, instead of going with Incineroar um, on his own, he's going with a Metagross. I mean, he might think, okay, Ethan didn't bring Tetrafine in the first game, so I can bring my uh, Amoongus and start sparring the opposing Pokemon because there's uh -huh. no Mystery Train coming up. Of course, we don't know yet if there is a Tapufini in the back or not, uh, but as of now, that Amoongus looks like he's in a great position to just fake out the Metagross and um, spore what was this after this is now the Incineroar. Yeah, so we are seeing a switch coming out from Ethan. Not the Tapufini, but instead his own Incineroar making an appearance here. Um, just dropping off an Intimidate on his opponent's Incineroar. But um, yeah, if Marco made the correct play here, or if he um, caught that, went for a spore into the Zapdos slot, that is already um, like one step um, towards his comeback potentially. Okay, we actually see a wow. fake out and spore combination. Uh, very clever to, I mean, I don't know if it was very clever, but like he just ignored that Metagross and went straight into that Zapdos, preventing it to getting off that Eagle of Havoc uh, and also putting it asleep. But yep. then it turned out to be the Incineroar. Um, yep. But now Marco is still in a great spot. He can just keep doing what he did in the beginning. He can ski. Uh, yeah, he could he could like knock off the Incineroar and go for another spore on the yep. me on the Metagross, for example. And then having two sleeping Pokemon on the opposing side, you can start dealing damage. Yeah. Uh, while the opponent's just taking that. Yeah. Well, Amoongus wo probably won't do too much in this battle in terms of damage. Um, we've seen a couple of World Championships where Amoongus uh, was <laughs> the the key Pokemon in the finals as well. So um, just like launching some spores here and there, predicting your opponent's uh, like Pokemon to switch in and out and so on, um, can mean that. They they never really get a grip on your team. While um, Incineroar can be used to destruct what Ethan is trying to do by like knocking off berries 
and then um, in the end having your own Pokemon like Marco's Damage Dealer, like the Zapdos or the Mega Metagross on his own um, to pick up the pieces. Yep. Ice Punch coming off dealing quite a lot of damage there, but uh, Moom is surviving, no berry activating yet, it looks like he's over 25%. That Flabbat, hopefully not getting a burn because otherwise you can't put it to sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's the Spore coming off, now both Ethan's Pokemon are asleep, um, and at first Flabbat was a lot. I can. Now it comes down to having two sleeping Pokemon. Is he switching out any of those? And huh. can you catch that switch with another Spore? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a game you can play because of course the Magnetogross was just put asleep, so it has a guaranteed sleep turn next turn. And um, if Marco wants to, he can just go for an attack um, and knock it right out. But um, at the same time, though, like, is a sleeping Metagross really worth it? Um, Ethan decides that yes, he thinks so, and is going to withdraw it and switch into his Landorus. So if Marco called this correctly and uh, used yet another Spore. This could have been huge. Also another option that Marco had available to him was just to, to double up into that slot and um, go with like a Flare Blitz to ensure the KO and the Mega Metagross um, in term in like if it stayed in there. Yep. And then also a Spore either in that slot if that Pokemon switched out or in the Incineroar if that woke up. Yeah, but, but we have to keep in mind that uh, Incineroar can wake up and yes. then fire off a Flare exactly. Blitz which would be enough to pick up the KO on that Amoongus. So instead he decided to switch in his Landorus, get off two Intimidates um, on both the Incineroar and what was the Mega Metagross and um, yeah, it's also in a fine position. Yep, and we finally get the confirmation that this Incineroar uh, indeed carries the item Assault West. Uh, now both landers on the field, nothing is sleeping anymore, uh, and even get his chance to finally do some damage. We saw this Scarf Landers did some work in the previous game. Let's see what it does in this game, if he decides to switch out with U-Turn once again, or uh, if he starts dealing damage with a potential um, rock slide, also uh, hoping for flinches. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see what's happening here. Yeah, uh, Incineroar um, called back after all those intimidates and um, decided to switch on his own Metagross. So now let's see whether Ethan uh, was actually trying to call that switch. Nope, is going to bring in his own Zapdos. So maybe he wants to um, go like get that speed control going now. And um, we still haven't seen the item on Marco's uh, Landorus, I believe, but we were um, looking at a potential Groundium Z. So. Uh, if there was a Z move coming out of Marco, this Zapdos switching could be could be pretty huge. Yep, and I really like the dynamic of uh, U-turn and having Incineroar in the team as well. He just called back his Incineroar, went for U-turn, brings back his Incineroar is what I believe is happening here soonish, and then he has Zapdos and Incineroar on the field, having the fake out, having Tailwind option, but he actually decides to bring in his own Metagross. Yeah, we have already seen that uh, Metagross is faster than um, the lander, so I think maybe he was thinking that, oh, maybe like my opponent predicted this U-turn and I'm um, going for like a strong Royal type attack into that slot, and he wanted to like kind of kind of sack off his Metagross because he knows, oh, it's like a sleep, it's a low HP, it yep. won't do too much in this battle anymore. But uh, Marco cleverly enough went for a Rock Tomb, um, hitting the Zapdos on the switch and doing a decent chunk of damage and also reducing its speed. So he can now potentially prevent it from setting up Tailwind altogether and um, yeah, really, um, really stopping Ethan's plan of trying to establish speed control right now. Yep. What do you think about the play of not Mega Evolving going straight for an Stomping Tantrum to prevent any incoming Intimidates afterwards and picking up the KO on that land? Um, Metagross, but actually Metagross switching out for Landorus. I think, I think you want to double up on the Zapdos this turn. Okay. Yeah, like like Rock Tomb and Ice Punch was probably would probably be enough. I think um, Ice Punch it's itself might be enough. Yeah, here. it's it's tough to call because um, like with the Intimidates and the potential um, like Harry? of like U turning and like recycling Intimidates, mm -hmm. um, that Landorus like yeah, so it's, it's double Intimidate now, so not going to do all too much damage. And um, True. yeah, I wanted to like say that you kind of want to pr prevent a situation where they have like Incineroar and Zapdos, but um, yeah, since Zapdos had the has the Electrium Z uh, confirmed and not the Berry, um, yeah, actually just doubling up into the Zapdos that term probably is fine. Oh wow, and we see a freeze coming off into that Incineroar. Of course, not too important there because you can just go for Flabbers and then fall out afterwards. Oh wow, okay, like but this is a big play here. We are seeing um, the Groundium Z, the Tectonic Rage coming out. Did he target the Zapdos or did he target... Um, I think he did because Tectonic Guard is yeah. coming off. It's not going into Landorus. It is going yeah, towards wow. the Zapdos. Nice play. Nicely yep. done. So the freeze didn't matter at all. Doubling up um, into that target knowing that, okay, Ice Punch is going to get the KO here because uh, thanks to Clear Body, Metagross cannot be intimidated this turn. And then, um, yeah, doubling up there with the Tectonic Range, ensuring that he will get a big KO this turn. Yeah, very great play. Um, let's say he stayed in with both Pokemon. Ice Punch would have 
take, uh, pick up the KO, and then take turn right, which just goes straight into that uh, medic wheels, which would be left on the field. Um, so very great play from Marco. I really uh, appreciate that play. Um, and Marco is in a great spot here, really taking advantage of that early uh, sleep uh, interruption from his Amoongus. Um, yeah, and the Metagross um, on Ethan's side is still asleep here, so it uh, looks like this time around Marco is the one in the driving seat, um, using Amoongus' potential to just generate positions um, where he like was able to get himself into spots where he could make those reads. And then those reads, like, and then he was able to really also like make those calls and make those plays. So it looks like uh, Marco definitely, uh, yeah, cannot be ruled out yet in this final tier, as he's on his way of equalizing the score. Yep, uh, very interesting to see how that Metagross was put asleep, uh, then switched out, came in, switched out immediately again. Yep. So this is this actually his first, first turn, sleep yeah. turn. Yep. Um, so you can't do too much here. Landorus once again switching out with U-turn. Uh, that is. I don't want to say downside, but that is something you have to do with Landris as a choice card. You can't easily lock yourself into moves, especially if you have Pokemon that are weak to ground type uh, moves, but also having opposing Pokemon that are immune to it. Yeah, once again, um, yeah, this like uh, between Zapdos and um, Landris both being flying types, there's a little bit of an anti synergy there. So yeah, just going for an ice punch into that slot um, looked pretty solid because there wasn't really anything you could have done. I mean, you could have tried to like. Um, yeah, I don't know, rearrange his position, or like uh, something that, that Ethan that can actually do is like, um, in general, like he has U-turn, so he can try and um, swap himself out of those positions, but um, with Incineroar being down and um, yeah, with like Fake Out yep. being a thing, like stopping that plan, uh, it looks like Marco will like, yeah, like Ethan doesn't really have too much to contest Marco's position right here. So one question going into that game 3, which is most likely to happen, uh, would you bring that Tapu Fini to prevent Amoongus from putting your Pokemon to sleep again? And if you are Marco and you won that game with Amoongus, are you bringing Zapdos again uh, to take care of that Fini? And if you bring Fini, which Pokemon do you, uh, like, um, would you not bring anymore? So a lot of mind games going uh, on, going into game 3 there. Uh, but we are not entirely done yet here. We see Ice Punch taking the knockout on that Landorus. Um, and yeah, they're shaking hands. So it looks like this second game goes to Marco here. Yeah, nicely done. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough call. Like, Tabu Fini um, is, like, solid, but it's mostly solid if you can get the Tailwind up and then, say, outspeed your opponents, Mega Metagross, yep. the Incineroar, and Landorus. Then, it, it, then that's when it really shines. But with the selection of Pokemon that Marco chose in this battle, um, it's actually true that Tabu Fini would do pretty well against them. I do think that Marco is not going to bring the Amoongus again, okay. um, just because of how, like, exploitable it seems. And for example, like even if you say you lead Amoongus, um, and you lead into like I don't know into say Incineroar, um, Metagross, or whatever, like you w you would always need to watch out for a potential type of Finny switch in. And now I think it's way more likely than it was in the second game. So I'm not even sure if you would want to go for the Spore right away. Um, so I don't know. I think uh, like. If I was Marco, I probably wouldn't want to bring a Pokemon that um, really could um, like shift up the momentum or like that shift up shifts up the uh, matchup significantly. Um, instead, if he just like relies on his play, uh, maybe he could even bring his own Tapu Fini, um, since like his, his opponent doesn't have great ways of dealing with Tapu Fini either. Yep. Um, like three Except Pokemon that are yeah, like three Pokemon that are weak to Water type attacks, and then uh, Tapu Fini and Zapdos. Um, but yeah, if he was able to keep the Zapdos in check, then that could be another option for him to, to try and um, bring his Tapu Fini in position. But yeah, it's it's always super hard to call um, with those type of teams because like all of these Pokemon are so solid, they work together so well. Um, I wouldn't even be like super shocked to see the Tyranitar potentially make an appearance. Um, but mm -hmm. um, I was thinking of uh, both Tapu Fini and Tyranitar yeah, yeah, for yeah. the yep. next game here. Uh, but yeah, I think. One crucial decision will be, will Marco bring his um, Amoongus here? You just stressed it out once. Um, I can just repeat it. Uh, Amoongus is a crucial pick here. You either bring it um, and then have your opponent to bring that Tabu Fini. But because, is there any uh, double up into uh, Amoongus that takes care of it? Flabbit is a lot of damage, Ice Punch as well, but you can just sw uh, switch around that yep. and move around that. So yeah, And then with Regenerator also, yep. like. Um, really helping it out. I don't think, um, yeah, like there is no Zen Headbutt on the Metagross, so 
Yeah, Amovis is a strong pick, um, but yeah, like against Tapu Fini and Incineroar, it just like doesn't really shine. So yep. yeah, it'll be a hard call to make. Oh, and actually, sure. uh, mm -hmm. seeing the in-game name of Marco, uh, I want to point out that he won the um, international challenge, the online tournament uh, for in the seniors division. The oh, did last he? two, both in um, February and March. Oh, no, both of them. Made. Okay. Yep. Um, and his brother in the Steelers division was doing well as well. I saw his tweets before, um, so he was actually like over all the Japanese players as well. He was first seed in that tournament. Oh, nice! Uh, so it's really nice to see that after his success at the online tournament, he is he made all the way up to Germany here uh, to Sunderfing and found himself in finals game three of the Steelers. Yeah, wow. Well, um, okay, so he is a little bit of a familiar name, and um, yeah. Let's see if he has what it takes to take home this tournament, um, take home the grand prize of $500 and of course the 200 championship points uh, that would bring him very very close to an invite to the Pokemon World Championships. I don't know how many tournaments he has played before. Uh, maybe if he wins this we can ask him that in an interview. Uh, but hold that thought though as the leads are being thrown out here. Yep. Uh, as far as I know he, is, he has his invite already and he's fighting for that day 2 invitation of course for that paid travel to Nashville, the World Championship. Um, I think we haven't talked about um, the World to Worlds at all so far. Um, there's, I mean, we are at the very late stage of this tournament. So every player that is uh, now entering tournaments, they either have sealed up their uh, day one invitation or they're fighting for a day two invitation. Yes, or just um, fighting for the prizes here. Yeah, of fighting for the prizes and is one option as well. <laughs> and the pride of becoming a regional champion. Well, here let's jump into this game here. We have Zapdos and Incineroar on Ethan's side. And. Um, Incineroar just came in and is next to Metagross on Marcus' side. Yeah, so we could just see the very uh, obvious play of going for like a fake out and setting up the Tailwind. On the other hand, Ethan might also want to go um, for like a lot of damage this turn and um, just go for the Z move right away. Um, I would be a little bit surprised if that is what we saw here. Um, instead though, we're seeing a fake out coming into what is now the Incineroar and a big Ice Punch hitting that Zapdos for a lot of damage. Um, however, Ethan will use the time to set up Tailwind and now has the speed advantage. Yep, uh, and what is really funny is that in this matchup here, uh, Zapdos now has his Z-move open of course, but that's Landris in the back potentially, yep. which can just eat up that, like, so many immunities uh, in this team. You have, like, ground weaknesses, but also immunities with Zapdos and Landris. Then you have the Electrium Z, Giga will have it. But if that is going into Landris, it's not doing any damage. So yes, you have uh, of offensive pressure, but you have to choose the right spot to attack there. Yeah, it's always risky with those Z moves. Of course, they're so powerful and you really want them to work out. But if there's an, an immunity in the back of your opponent's Pokemon, uh, then you always need to like watch out a little bit. However, on the other side, it can also be um, something you can use to your advantage where you're like, oh, my opponent is probably going to expect the Z-move, so he will probably just protect and switch. So uh, you can go ahead and like maneuver around a little bit or expect um, the switch into Landris and go for like a punishing move. Yep. Uh, interesting to see that he's setting up Tailman and then double switching out. So no uh -huh. attack coming off from Ethan here. Uh, but there's a fake out into that. Zapdos. Fake, fake out Ice Punch potentially? Yep. But Metagross is really taking the well. Uh, yes. Funny, like, luckily enough, that is not going into Landorus mm -hmm. there. That's true. Um, uh, Landorus, though, uh, not in a position where it can really do all too much damage. Of course, it's a ground type Pokemon. It's up against two ground type weaknesses, but at the same time, its partner Pokemon, Metagross, also weak to ground type attacks. So if you wanted to use Earthquake, you probably had to switch and, like, into his Zapdos, but then um, Earthquake isn't enough to KO uh, Metagross or Incineroar. So, really, a little bit of an awkward position here. Yep. Um, that is the downside of Scarf Rock Slide, uh, Scarf Landers here. I would have seen a Scarf Special variant which would have fitted uh -huh. into this team. That would be interesting. Um, but we see him not switching out. He might go for that U turn again. Or there's a Rock Slide Stomping Tantrum combination coming out. There's one play as well. Yep. Uh, but just a U turn going out into Incineroar again, which is what we see, which we saw before. Uh, Shuffling those Intimidate, bringing your Landers back in when you need it. Uh, but for now, he's bringing back his is what I believe yeah. is happening here. Yeah, I think so. And um, yep, there it is. So it will drop another Intimidate, or it will drop the first Intimidate rather on the Metagross. And also, like, he will have the opportunity to go for Fake Out the following turn. However, through all of this, he wasn't really able to do a lot of damage. So now, 
with this stomping tantrum, um, not affecting his opponent's Zapdos at all. And well, okay, it's it's nice to switch an Incineroar into an Ice Punch, but at the same time, this is now his last turn of Tailwind, and he hasn't really made all too much use of it. And it doesn't look like he will be able to set it up anytime soon, because now his opponent looks to be the one um, with a speed advantage, with his own Zapdos on the field. He's the one, like Marco can now set up Tailwind potentially this turn or the following turn. Um, Ethan can try and stop him by going for something like a fake out and ice punch this turn, but at the same time, committing a play like that, there's always the opportunity that Marco just switches into his Incineroar again um, and waits for another round before um, he wants to like attack. Interesting. I was expecting the Incineroar to come in, but on the other side, for Metagross and then setting up Tailwind here. Uh, I, li I like the way Marco's playing this. Yep. So he's bringing his Incineroar, getting that Intimidate off on both Pokemon there, um, and his Metagross. Just protecting here, uh, stalling out the Tailwind, and then we have to see how Marco is dealing damage afterwards. And the Stomping Tantrum going into the Metagross, so this was the last turn of Tailwind here for Ethan, and now neither of them has Zapdos on the field, so there won't be a Tailwind coming up this turn, uh, but Marco now is the one with the fake out pressure, and now um, I do think that like if Marco called the correct target and went for like uh, like a strong set of moves like knockoff and ice punch or something expecting a switch in um, he definitely has an opportunity now but nope he wants to wait a little bit longer brings in a Zapdos now probably expecting something like a stopping tantrum going into that slot and um, it looks like Ethan um, is making the switch into Lander so that like could have been one of those opportunities where you just go for the ice punch knowing that at some point like this switch has to happen um, but neither of them um, have really gone all too, like, uh, too far out with their reads so far and are trying <laughs> to play conservatively. Yep, what happened so far is like a few ice punches left and right, but going into that uh, Metagross and that Incinero not dealing too much damage, we see a Flare Blitz after that Intimidate, not enough to pick up the KO on a Metagross, but Metagross itself, um, a second stomping tantrum into a flying Pokemon. Yeah, now you, now you just ice punch the Incinero. <laughs> Uh, and that is one play. I expect the Landers to once again go for that U-turn to bring back in his Incineroar to have that uh -huh. fake out again. Uh, but yes, that is a play to go for that Ice Punch and that Incineroar. Um, because with these teams, at one point, these Incineroars switch off all Landers anyway. Yeah, um, and Zapdos on Marcus' side uh, is pretty safe to go for a Tailwind here. Of course, Ice Punch does a decent chunk. Um, and so does Rock Slide. There's always the potential of flinching or freezing. Uh, but that could be one line at least for him to play it, or he could switch Zapdos into <laughs> Metagross and um, take those incoming like Ice Punch and Rock Slide, for example. Yep. Let's see what Landers is doing. This time it goes for Rock Slide, missing, missing the uh, Incineroar. That might be crucial in terms of damage calculation when he now goes for Stomping Tantrum into that slot. But he decided to go for Ice Punch, probably trying to prevent that Tailwind coming up yep. from what you were talking about. But now uh, with that missed Rock Slide, no flinch possible. That Flabbers is picking up the KO on Metagross and putting uh, Marco in a really great spot. Yeah, nicely done here by Marco. Um, he will get rid of his opponent's Mega Pokemon and his Incineroar, even though it is intimidated, of course, uh, was able to win that encounter. And now um, we're probably seeing Zapdos um, coming in here. It's actually the Incineroar for Ethan. Okay. Uh, so he can get off that Intimidate on both the Incineroar and the Mega Metagross of his opponent. Uh, we've seen those Pokemon for like so many times now, but even in this third game now, um, it remains unclear like what the best type of like how to to perfectly play this matchup. Um, it looks like Ethan will um, now like be trying to like climb back into this game somehow. Um, he was the one who set up Intimidate first, um, but it doesn't look like he will be um, the one who like he, like he didn't go up in Pokemon yet. Um, mm -hmm. So instead, his opponent was the one making like those big play here, leaving the Incineroar in. And um, yeah, now while Ethan's Incineroar is not intimidated, um, I think Lander is switching for Marco. Just like once again, seems so obvious and so natural, um, getting those two intimidates off. And like this time around, there's no Metagross on the field that could punish that with an Ice Punch. Yep. And Lander itself being uh, locked into Rockside wants to switch out here as well because it won't be able to take an Ice Punch from that um, Lander. Uh, excuse me, from that Metagross. So we see a little bit of repositioning from both sides. Yep, and there uh, is the Landorus. Yep, uh, but there's nothing you can do about it. No Ice Punch coming off. So, <coughs> um, yep. let's see how this works out for both players. We see a Protect and a Metagross. Yeah, very cautious play by Marco, but I do like it. Yep, and there's the Knock Off going into the Metagross. So, nothing too exciting happening here other than a little bit of repositioning. Um, Ethan won't even be able to set up Tailwind here because that Metagross uh, it's just dealing so much pressure on that Zapdos, and then um, we still haven't seen the item, have we? Yeah, we, yeah, we have. Yeah, it, it is, is the Tectonic Rage, and so you can go for that because 
Yeah, well, there's still the liners in the back. Yeah, though. I think I think just ice conscious into the Zapdos, and there's not really much um, that Ethan can do against that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Marco once again with cautious play. Um, he will switch in the Landorus now, but if the Zapdos does not have Protect, um, yeah, it should go down to, to an Ice Punch here. Yep. Um, and then Landorus, I would have expected to switch out for Incineroar here because it's not doing too much against those two Pokemon. There's the Ice Punch coming off. It is enough to pick up the KO even down to his last two Pokemon, with the one being Choice Scarf Landorus. Yep. And uh, now being reduced speed thanks to the Rock Tomb. The Rock Tomb coming in clutch here. Because now Metagross is faster than that, uh, he will probably just switch it out, bring it back uh, yeah. in his neutralized uh, Metagross, and then he can just fire off that um, very strong Ice Punch, Ice taking punch. care of that yeah. Landorus. Uh, he probably just double switches here because uh, his Landorus is taking care of that Incineroar, and the uh, Metagross is taking care of the Landorus, so he can easily sacrifice his Zapdos and um, his Incineroar on the back. Yeah, it honestly doesn't really matter too much what he's doing, I think, at this point. Um, he really played this game well. Um, he didn't get over eager. He didn't overextend at any point in time. He just like really cautiously switched in and out, and um, got his uh, Pokemon into the position. Because like the thing is with uh, those mirror matches like that, like with two teams that are so similar um, and that really like like all the mobility they have. Um, as soon as you lose a Pokemon, all that uh, switching and all the resistance is like all of that falls apart a little bit and so as soon as Marco was able to knock out his opponent's Mega Metagross um, yeah Ethan just really couldn't um, contest uh, Marco's positioning anymore yep uh, and Landorus had to lock himself into move he, he decides to go for that rock side that's a critical hit uh, but we see the opposing Landorus having U-turn as well that is a great option um, so yeah, uh, reposition himself and there's the Metagross coming in so Metagross now is faster uh, like not only faster but it, it doesn't have any reduced attack stats anymore that knockoff uh, thanks to that Megastone is not dealing too much damage either yep. um, that Landorus can't protect here so we'll just uh, eat an Ice Punch probably go down to that and then it's Incineroar picking up the KO Metagross uh, getting knocked off from that Incineroar so a lot of stuff happening but the outcome should be should be decided here. Yes, so one more fake out here and the Ice Punch is coming out. Will knock out the Landorus and Ethan is now down to his very last Pokemon. That shiny Incineroar uh, that has carried him all the way into the finals. He was able to win the first game, came pretty close to tasting the title, tasting the championship. But in the end it looks like Marco Hermata Kaludra Silva is going to be our champion here at the Stuttgart Regionals in Sindelfingen. And um, yeah, what a set though. Um, I mean, both of them really playing their hearts out here in this encounter. Both of them using very standardish teams. And um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this has been going on for like 40 minutes now. And I think this is probably like one of the longest sets of the day yep. for sure. Um, we saw some very good play here, very standardish teams, but at the same time also piloted super well. And um, yeah, Mega Metagross also <laughs> won't be able to see the light in this game. <laughs> he will go back to Marco. Um, but yeah, as we were saying, only a matter of time here until Marco will win his very first regional championship, I believe. I think so too. Um, I'm not entirely sure what is going on in the senior division. He might have won another um, regional before, uh, but this time going through Swiss and a top 8 um, cut here. Uh, so that is a great success for him. I'm pretty much sure that he's um, locking up himself in top 16, which then will help him to get to the World Championship in Nashville. Um, yep. So the last Z move of the game, Tectonic Rage, deciding, uh, sealing it up for Marco here. So congratulations from my side. Even of course being the runner up here, taking him $250 a square as well. Yep. Uh, but the title, the pride goes all to Marco. Hermanta Kajuda Silva. Yeah, very well played here once again by both of them. And um, yeah, we'll see if. Either of them um, will probably make a splash in the Masters division at some point. Here we have both of them, and um, yeah, they look pretty composed there. Um, yeah, being used to like the cameras and the flashlights, you know. Marco just signing off. Hey, yeah, like another tournament win. And um, yeah, yeah it was, I'm pretty glad that we got the opportunity to showcase um, that final um, to see what is going on in a match like this. And um, yeah, maybe we might not only see them in like, the Masters division at some point, but also at the Pokemon World Championships in the Seniors division. Yep, representing Europe, of course, both from uh, Italy and uh, the United Kingdom. 
Uh, great success. We will see if we will get an interview with them so shortly. Um, I see you already stroking your uh, fairy on. Being oh, very oh. happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, but yeah, I mean very great show here from the senior side uh, Before we are going into a potential interview We once want to show you the top 8 record once again and tell you what you will see tomorrow Welcome back Pokemon trainers. I am joined by Marco your senior Champion here at Stuttgart regional championships the boys have gone to go call off after that amazing final So you've got myself and Flareon conducting this interview. Congratulations. How do you feel being the regional champion? Uh, I feel really good because uh, that was my first tournament uh, uh, outside the Italy so That's really great. It's a fantastic result. So you say you've only really competed in Italy. How long have you been playing Pokemon for? Uh, I started to play uh, completely uh, uh, Pokemon mm -hmm. in uh, two years ago. So with the uh, VGC uh, 2016. Okay, with all the primal Pokemon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, this met uh, this meta game is really good because uh, uh, so so many good stuff uh, can be really great. And we saw a lot, between you and Ethan, you had a lot of very similar Pokemon with sort of the Incineroar, Landorus, yep. Metagross. Um, what sort of brought you to pick that particular team? Was it because it is so diverse and consistent or is there a favourite Pokemon in there for you? Uh, I used this team because uh, it was my uh, only team who can beat uh, the problem of the metagame for now mm -hmm. or Como. Well, Kamo has so been very popular in Masters. Have you faced it a lot today in Seniors? Uh, and, uh, I took only uh, two Kamo's, I mm -hmm. think. So I elaborate uh, a plan for for B team. Fantastic. Well, it looks like it certainly did you really well. I mean, you've come out here as the champion. We can have a little look as well. I've just put Flary onto one side. Obviously, you've got your two boxes here of TCG cards. You've got your beautiful playmat. Do you want to show it off just to everyone at home? See, you've got the champion playmat there with Sogle um, the Cross and Sogolo. So, fantastic there. You can easily take that. And, of course, you have got your amazing trophy as well. So, going forward, do you think you're going to be coming to more events outside of Italy? Uh now, now I think uh, my next uh, really big tournament uh, is uh, the World Championship in Nashville this year. How many championship points do you have at the moment? You said uh, it's about 700 something? Uh, now I have uh, 700 and uh, 59 uh, CP. Fantastic. And if you keep going to more events in Italy, maybe you can even hit that 1000 before Nashville. That would be really exciting. Well, congratulations. We won't leave you any longer to go celebrate with your friends and family. Huge congratulations here from us. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching Marco here take the Seniors Division Regional Championships. Is there anyone you want to shout out at home just before we go, say thank you for practicing and training with? Is there anyone at home you want to say thank you to? Any of your friends? Uh, um, I, uh, for sure, uh, my mom. Because mm -hmm. uh, it permits uh, to me to become uh, to come uh, to this region, so more uh, some friends who helped me for uh, with the team building uh, of this team, and uh, uh, especially uh, my friend uh, uh, Giuseppe Musico, who mm -hmm. uh, cut the. And the uh, regional uh, of uh, Stuttgart okay. uh, in the uh, master division. So you'll be cheering for him tomorrow then? Uh, yeah. Well, you never know. We might even see tomorrow an Italian take the um, master's division title as well. So congratulations once again. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow for master's top eight.